Oh, Hyundai, I have to hand it to you because you're making an undeniable charge and mark on the performance world right now. Uh, and you've done, you know what you've done now? You've brought it to the United States. You've brought this greatness to the United States, and we're going to get a little taste. This is the 2019 Velocitor N model. Uh, it's coming, uh, production is going to begin September 2018 uh, with availability in Q4 of 2018. So this year, we're going to have, at the end of this year, we're going to have availability of this car and if you're not familiar with what's going on with Hyundai right now basically they poached Albert Bierman who used to be head of BMW's M division and is now in charge of Hyundai's N division don't get it confused um, and he's going to be basically he's heading all these projects and as we dive into the details of this car I think it's going to become pretty apparent uh, why they picked him and how his genius is overflowing into the cars that he's that his team is producing and I, I'm just totally impressed with this I'm really excited to break this news not well I'm kind of late to the late to it now I saw this news come out last night at 9:45, and I uh, went to bed and that's why I don't even have uh, 5,000 subscribers after doing YouTube for six years so it's very sad uh, but let's move on to what's important let's start with the uh, the the exterior of this car. We're going to go through the specs, we're exterior, interior, my opinion on it in the competition. So that's what we're going to break down in this video. Uh, let's get right into it. So starting off uh, with the front of this car, you're going to notice there are some dedicated air ducts um, specifically for cooling the brakes. Uh, you know, uh, I'll show you the different angles so you can actually see that they are functional, but a lot of cars in this hot hatch segment, on pricing, let's just go to that real quick, I think this is going to be about a $26,000 car. I think it's going to be within two to $3,000 of that either way. Uh, that Pricing has not been revealed yet, uh, but I think this is going to be a mid to high $20,000 car, which is going to be great. I don't think this is going to crest $30,000. I don't even think you'll be able to spec it. Uh, with options to crest $30,000. So this is going to fall uh, pretty much into a high-end ST range um, and maybe a mid-range Golf GTI. Um, but I don't think it'll touch uh, Civic Type R. All right, so back on to the exterior of the car. We're going to start with the, the grill here. Honeycomb grill, mostly uh, just wide open there. Big, big gapping, or a big... Um, area in the bottom uh, to get air into the inner cooler uh, you can see the radiator up top and there's even some ducts uh, almost like a diffuser just under where the honeycomb cuts off looks really nice um, and then there's also the dedicated front air ducts for enhanced brake cooling the wheels you're seeing here are 19 inch alloy wheels 225 uh, by 40 r18 wheels are generally the standard wheels so i'm thinking these are probably 235 on the r18 wheels you're looking at michelin pilot super sport summer tires and on the 19s you're going to have uh, pirelli p0s so very two very serious tires uh, to be putting on a car price like this or supposedly priced like this i, I don't actually know what it's going to be i'm just guessing um, but we all know i'm always right so it, it's just it, you can tell that again this is where Albert Bierman is coming in and saying no we are putting these tires on it I don't care what it costs this is what's right this is what people are gonna love and that's what the people who are gonna be buying these cars are going to appreciate again a little detail that I think is excellent and these wheels this is almost like America's a45 AMG even though it's not an all-wheel drive car it just I mean, look at it from the side profile, the little spoiler off the back with the carbon fiber accent. I mean, ugh, it's beautiful. I'm not, I'm telling you, like if I, if this was out when I was looking for a Focus ST, I do not know which way I would have gone to be totally honest with you. Okay, so yeah, I mean, looking at this picture here, kind of from a side angle um, or like a front side angle, you have the red accents here. And, and I don't know what type of, of visual package this is. I don't know if everything's going to have red. We don't know what colors they're coming out with. Um, but the red brake calipers, um, you have these red little flicks or diffusers out on the front part of the car. And there's even these little inlets, these cuts that are dedicated, it seems, uh, for brake cooling or guiding air uh, to make it as, aer as aerodynamic as possible. And these little side cuts on the car that actually force the air around where it looks like um, 
you know a fog light would be down in that section is just cool to have this this part of the front bumper that is separated from the car I mean it, it's this is I know this is stretching it okay but it reminds me and just god don't troll me in the comments but it reminds me of like the back part of a Ford GT you know how it has those that massive piece of whatever the cars make carbon fiber whatever that stretches out to the rear wheel well, wheel well um, that's what it's separated like that I mean it's just a really cool feature for a car this level of a car um, moving back again the wheels I just think these wheels look beautiful they look like AMG wheels um, two-tone with looks like brushed aluminum uh, and then the black centers uh, just very very sharp looking down along the side here again with a black diffuser and if you look uh, or black side uh, sill um, and if you look closely on the back corner there where there's again another uh, air duct again this is uh, pulling air just around the car to make it as aerodynamic as possible um, there's the little N logo something that an enthusiast is just going to appreciate lots of ends up the side of this car I mean you got one right there on the front brake pad and then the one on the back BMW is always known for putting as many M badges all over their cars and maybe uh, Mr. Albert Bierman has decided that, that is the right thing to do, and I agree with him. I think they look great. Um, again, this is a Velocitor, so it does have that quirky three-door setup. Um, so it's a four-door hatch, which is weird, uh, but it's not. It's it's cool. I mean, it, it's it's very cool. Plus, it actually helps shed weight. You don't have to put all the little components in there to have another door on the car, so it makes it lightweight. I'm thinking this is probably around a 3,000-pound car, which is a very safe estimate. If it was under 3,000 pounds, I'd be very surprised and happy. Uh, but we're just going to guess it's about uh, 3,000 pounds. Uh, I haven't talked about the engine yet. We're looking at a 2-liter direct injection turbocharged, rated up to 275 horsepower, and I read it said rated up to, so I'm wondering if that's the overboost function, which a lot of cars have now nowadays, um, which would run for 15 to 20 seconds at 275 horsepower at 6,000 RPMs, and then it has 260 foot-pounds of torque from, uh, listen to this, from 1450 RPMs to 4. 1700 rpms i mean 1450 are you kidding me that is so low it must be a very small turbo uh, but again i i don't mind small turbos i like the low end torque and being able to get out of turns and not having having to wait for that uh, boost and, and i don't want to wait for a boost on a, like a car like this like a hatchback in a supra it's a different experience but this is this you want to have that low end torque to pull out of turns um, be able to zip around the city or wherever you're going I think that's a good move, and that's what the Focus ST has as well. The engine compression compression ratio is 9.5 to 1. I don't have I don't have the slightest clue as to what that means. I always look at that statistic, and I didn't feel like looking up that information and faking like I knew what it meant in this video. So I'll let you let me know in the comments. Moving on, let's go. Let's just jump to the back of this car. This the back are like you have to be kidding me. This thing is gorgeous. I'm losing my mind over here. It has. Look at the spoiler. Let's just start up top first. The spoiler, it has these little carbon fiber accents on the side of it. I don't know if it's actually carbon fiber. Um, the close up picture kind of makes me think maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But then you have this little triangle up here, that little almost like F1 fog light up on top of the car. And the tail lights have the Aventador like. Uh, shark teeth design the three slits coming out on the sides absolutely gorgeous again the end badge on the you know right side of the trunk lid and then you have the uh, antenna on the back of the car that's already tucked like a like a shark fin just looks so well kept and the spoiler is is a three mount but it has the the two uh, maybe it's a five oh, it's a five point mount it looks like uh, I thought the two edges were floating there, but again, just looks functional. It's not overdone, but it's it's sporty to the person with the right eye. If you look down on the door, uh, just off the side fender, you can see the cuts, the holes that are coming out the side, releasing air back toward uh, the rear of the car, guiding it around the back of the car. Just like little details like that that are absolutely beautiful and impressive just this car is very well thought out and put together 
Another thing now, if you you know, obviously you've all seen the Civic Type R. Let's look at this back plastic parts. Okay, so the bottom half of the car is really well done here because you know we start in the front of the car with the the bottom half of it having the uh, black and red. It's very subtle in the front. Okay, you see the little or the little black flare there in the front. Okay, now we move down the side of the car. It's a little more prominent. You're like, oh, there's a there's a black you know side skirt on the car. Then you come to the back of the car, and pretty much half of the bumper is painted black, is black gloss, with again the red accent still flowing all the way around the exhaust tips with uh, diffuser-like uh, molding on the bottom of the bumper. And these little plastic parts where the Civic Type R is so faulted, because it has these massive plastic uh, things slapped onto the back of it, and this car has the plastic, there's a couple, you know, there's those four little sections, but look how tastefully done it is you don't even notice it it looks it looks awesome and it's just very subtle i just i'm very impressed with how they designed the back of this car and additionally the exhaust tips <laughs> how perfect are those exhaust tips these are the type of exhaust tips that the aftermarket if you're going to replace them you're going to put on a tip that looks exactly the same but it's louder or more free flowing you're not going to change the exhaust tip and what i mean by that is the focus st comes with that center mount exhaust which looks pretty good but the aftermarket, almost every single aftermarket exhaust you see on a Focus ST is the dual outlet uh, pipes like I have, the four and a half inch tips. This just has like Focus RS back end, uh, the dual outlets, and it's perfect. You don't, you don't need to do anything crazy. Um, this is exactly what people want to see. If I owned this car, I, I wouldn't even be looking to uh, re do anything with the exhaust as is as a first mod. I mean, it's just, it's just so tastefully done. I can't compliment them enough on how this car looks and I'm interested to see what you guys think in the comments I know a lot a lot of Focus ST uh, and GTI people that uh, watch my videos I don't see how you guys can there's not a lot of hate that can go around on this car I'm just excited the hot hatch segment keeps growing and this is such a good addition the other thing that's great about this car is again it's pushing the portfolio so Ford cannot just say okay we're gonna have a 252 horsepower engine again with 273 foot-pounds of torque no no they cannot do that they have to match or or surpass uh, what Hyundai has laid out there with their US bound N division and the Velocitor. I mean, you can't just repeat what you've already covered. This is just uh, a stunning car. It's exciting to, it's going to be exciting to watch this go up against the GTI, the Focus ST, even the Civic Si, the you know the coupe and the four door. Moving on to the interior, I got, I got a little too excited there. Moving on to the interior, the interior is okay. Um, I'm not that excited about it. If you take a look at this interior shot here, you get a good idea of what the seats are going to be like. It looks like leather trimmed, uh, with more of a cloth center. Uh, the steering wheel looks. Decent. I would have liked to have seen a flat bottom, but maybe this wheel is one of those small circular wheels like they have in the BRZ or FRS, and then I'd be okay with it. So um, that's fine. The honestly, the Hyundai badge kind of takes away from it. I wish they just put the N in there. That'd be kind of cool, or Velocitor. But um, again, branding—that's kind of a big thing. Probably an argument they're never going to win. Uh, keyless entry looks like obviously keyless start. The gauges look nice. I like that they're analog and you can probably switch the middle of it. And, and also on the interior there is, as the revs climb, there's a sequential shift indicator that shows when you uh, need to shift for best performance. So again, thinking about the driver. Additional driver aids here, as you can see on the screen, in the middle of this picture, it says uh, suspension. You can't see what the fuck that says. Suspension, ESC, all that type of stuff. It, so the, it's going to have an adjustable suspension. Again, an area where uh, the Focus ST is lacking and they definitely need to pick up in the next iteration of it. But uh, back onto the steering wheel, you can see this little checkered flag. Uh, it looks like that is race mode or track mode. It's just, uh, it's it's tastefully done. The interior is not doesn't blow me away. But at the same time, the exterior of this car is absolutely beautiful. Um, and at the end of the day, that's what everyone else is looking at. And that is what uh, you're going to be looking at as you're detailing it, cleaning it, uh, appreciating it. And I just think they did a, a nice job. You know, with these types of cars, you can't have everything. They have to cut costs in some areas. And it sounds like the engine is in this car, the design that went into the outside of this car, that's where they spent a lot of the money. The shift knob is okay looking. Um, again, that's an easy thing to replace in the aftermarket, but I just think it's okay. 
and see it, it yeah it's a six speed yeah so I, i'd say the the interior is not too exciting on this car but i can easily overlook that for uh what it's like on the outside another thing that was extremely exciting to be reading about uh when researching this car was the uh, high performance um, engine is backed up by a close ratio short throw six speed manual transmission and it has downshift rev matching capability. I I'm, I'm, don't know if you'll be able to take that off, but I'm sure at some point uh, you probably can. Uh, the transmission has carbon coated synchro rings and gear material uh, for smoother operation and low, lower overall shift force and it has a positive engagement feel. Additionally, the powertrain has a multi-mode high flow active sport exhaust system with a variable exhaust actuator. So in N mode, uh, this is going to uh, have an exhilarating engine, engine overrun uh, exhaust crackle uh, during spirited driving and I cannot wait to hear that. The one that they have overseas sounded amazing in the videos that have been leaked and for them to tune that in there i don't know something about that gets me excited i i don't know what it is I, all of us i'm sure we love it but um it's just they paid attention to all the right things all the things that uh, we're going to care about at the end of the day this is just i mean let's let's kind of kind of wrap things up here um my opinion on it extremely excited it's going to be a great all-around car as you can see in the image here uh, with the the hatch opened up and the seats folded down it's kind of weird uh, you know i'm used to just you know in the trunk of the st it drops down maybe two or three inches and you're in the trunk this looks like it drops down a foot and a half or something like that and you dive in the trunk i mean but look at the back of this look at the open space to throw things in you could throw a couple tons of topsoil in there and you know do whatever you need to do you know it's going to have multiple driver modes we're gonna have let's see here it has a normal has a sport has n has eco mode and custom which is that one screen that we saw before where you can probably change the dynamics of different components of the car uh, i mean it's it's an amazing uh it's an amazing car that they built here uh oh, i'm actually looking at some notes here so here's the colors it's going to come in uh, ultra black chalk white racing red and n exclusive n exclusive performance blue uh, which is inspired by hyundai motorsport and the interior uh, combinations are black with unique molding molding accent colors tailored to the exterior combination so that's interesting uh, it'll flow kind of based on the out the exterior of your car and the colors and accents on the inside of the car this is really something else that we have uh, coming to the united states in conclusion this is going to raise the bar for the Focus ST, the GTI. I think the Civic Si is safe right now. It's kind of in a different division, um, but again, they're going to be they're going to be looking. And really, what I think Honda needs to do to compete in this segment a little bit more is make an Si version uh, of their hatchback Civic. And, you know, they have the Type R. I get it, but Civic hatchback in an Si would look very cool. The competition is going to continue to inch up closer and closer and closer. The Type R is the king of all front wheel drive hatches, but look already where the next step down is. And that's, in my opinion, that's this Hyundai Velocitor N. It's 275 horsepower, 260 foot pounds. Um, and the next thing that comes as far as power ratings would be the Focus ST uh, in the United States, at least. I know in Europe, there's some special edition GTIs uh, but again, that price range goes way higher uh, than you'd be looking at it. Or normal GTI, Focus ST, Civic Si, uh, etc. So it's extremely exciting. Front-wheel drive cars continue to be produced. They continue to be exciting. They're, you know, the, the things like torque steer, uh, which are con commonly a problem with front-wheel drive cars, and understeer, are being tuned out of these cars. It's it's truly amazing. It's a cheap platform, like I've said in previous videos. I can be nothing but excited and thankful that Hyundai is paying attention to this segment. They're bringing it to the United States. And as consumers, the best thing that we can do is buy the car. That's the best thing you can do as a consumer is speak with your wallet. Uh, and I'm excited to see the sales just accelerate of this car. Uh, it's gonna really help Hyundai as a brand. Their whole Genesis lineup is absolutely stunning. It's, a, it's, a, it's an exciting time in the uh, performance hot hatch world, uh, especially here in the United States, finally getting a taste of some of the greatness that the rest of the world uh, continuously gets and we are left out. But I don't know, if you're still with me at the end of this rant, I really appreciate you watching. Please like the video, subscribe, 
uh, and leave a comment below what was your uh, you know what's your favorite part about this car what car are you guys aspiring to get uh, are you looking to get a focus st are you going to hold off and get this hyundai velocitor i think i think it's it's maybe worth waiting if you're uh, if you're considering buying a car here within the year and if you do have the patience to wait but I'd say it's worth it. Uh, when you're buying a new car, you definitely want to get what you want. You do not want to settle. So thank you for watching. Again, like, share, subscribe, and we will see you soon.